my dear friends in Christ, here with us tonight is Reverend Father Anthony Mado. I have the pleasure this night not only to work on him, but to hand over the microphone to him. God bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, I would like us to reflect on the caption, Divine Arrangement. Divine Arrangement. Whatever that happens to somebody or someone in this life, I believe it never happens by chance. As human beings, we may think that what happens in our life is by chance. But the way I see it is through divine arrangement. God, when he was creating us, was not creating human beings and creation and creatures by chance. He was doing everything from the book of Genesis, as we read, from the book of Genesis chapter 1, following. He made every day to be special. That's what I call the beauty of creation. But in our life, many people see their life as going upside down. But tonight, after listening to the Word of God and insight and inspiration from the Scripture, one will be able to take a, a, a deep breath and reconsider how he or she sees what is going on in his or her own life. Let's go into prayer. I know it hasn't been easy for many of us seeing what is going on in your life. You'll be asking God, why this, why that, why me? What is going on in my life? Some people don't even understand themselves again. Many are confused. Many are still confused about their life. Many are still confused about their family. Many are still confused about their future. Many are still confused about their exams and their success and their business and their marriage. Many are still confused about what is happening among siblings and their children and so on. A lot of questioning to God. And you'll be saying, why are we going through this if God has arranged that we shall be like him? If God has created us his own image and likeness, why am I going through this route? Why am I suffering? Why am I in this condition? What is happening in my family? Father, these are the genuine questions from my children. I'm throwing it back to you, Jesus. I'm throwing it back to you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, to provide answers for my children. I don't have any answer. I am your word is seven. I am nothing. But you are all wisdom. You are all wisdom. You are all powerful, God. You are an awesome God. I present before you my children on this line. My spiritual children are yearning and craving for you. As Psalm 42 says, like the deer that yearns for running stream, even so my soul is yearning and craving for you, my God. My children are waiting for answers about what is going on in their life. And we believe that you have arranged this world the way it's supposed to be. You have created us not by chance. They, all, they read all this in the Bible, but some of them are still not convinced. Some are still are doubting promises. Some are still being tormented by what is going on in their life. Some, their faith are, are shaken by what is going on in their life. And so, Father, I pray that you hearken to the voice of their plea. They believe in you. That's why they come into this line. They trust in you. That's why they still read the Bible, oh God. They still have reassurance that one day things will be fine. Why they exist, some of them still don't understand, in spite of the fact that they go through turbulence and they still survive. 
it's by your own grace, oh God. But some people don't see it because a lot of things are going on in their mind. A lot of things are going on in their family. And some of them are confused. And in their bemusement, they seek for God. They reach out for God. They doubt to be understood. They doubt to understand a lot. But sometimes it's not easy for them. I pray, Father, for your enlightenment. I pray, Father, for your insight and inspiration. I pray, Father, for transformation for their family. I pray, Father, for revival in our own time. I pray, Father, for your divine grace to reassure them, O oh God, that today will be a new beginning for them. It's not easy for them. It hasn't been easy for many of them. In spite of what they are going through, both home and abroad, they are confused. I pray that you, your divine mercy will fall upon them. Alleviate their suffering, O oh Lord, and he let all prosperity and pass in their life. Their challenges, their life challenges are too much, O oh God, for many of them. It hasn't been easy, but tonight you will make it easier for them. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters and my brothers, Tonight is another night for us to look into the scripture to see how our life is arranged by God. I believe in divine arrangement and success. When you have divine arrangement, you have divine favor. When your life is planned by God, then there is hope. When your life is planned by God, then there is reassurance of divine grace. When your life is in the hand of God, you will be singing, I'm in God's hands, I shall not fear. I'm in God's hands, I shall not fear. I'm in God's hands, I shall not fear. Divine blessings, how my portion, divine blessing is my portion. Yes, divine blessing is your portion. When God is blessing you, even when you are going through turbulent weather, you will still know that the hand of God is with you. God is holding the whole world in his path. Remember that he is a great designer. He designed and arranged. This world, the way it's supposed to be. He designed it. Look at the, the flowers around you. Look at the flowers around you. That will see. That will show us that this this world is designed by somebody. This this world is designed by a divine that we do not see. Look at the flowers. Look at different colors. Look at the peacock, and see different colors. And look at the awesome God. You can imagine how God will be. When all these beauties and handsomeness come from God, you can imagine how our God will look like. He's a great designer. Look at our mother Mary. Look at her clothing. She designed all this. When we went to Kenya, we saw a lot of things that show us how these people lived the type of pot they have, and so on, and the jars, and so on. It, it, God is an awesome God. When you look around, there is nothing that will not tell you about God. When we move to the mountains, you can see the hand of God on the mountains. Not built by human beings. Look at solid rocks, like mountains, not just hills, but mountains. He just spoke and it was made. He just spoke and they were made. This is divine arrangement. And if God had arranged all this creation and handed it over, handed this creation to man and woman to manage and said, increase and multiply, be fruitful and multiply, then conquer the earth. You can see how the Americans are conquering the earth, how the world is conquering the earth. We used to travel by boat, down engine boat. We used to walk on the, um, with our feet, but now we are driving cars. We used to do telegram. Now every, almost everybody has cell phones. Look at how we are conquering the earth. 
said, look at it. You can imagine how many years the Bible spoke about conquering the earth. Look at, without the heater, we cannot be under the cold weather. This is divine arrangement, my dear brothers and sisters. Look at the air we breathe. It's a divine arrangement. You can imagine the, 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 the fishes cannot survive in the ocean or the river or sea without the water. You can imagine we cannot survive without the oxygen. And when we are suffering, we cannot breathe. You go through the oxygen, and you can imagine what your insurance will tell you about uh, oxygen and so on. So when we look at divine arrangement, you can see that God, in all ramification, have, he has designed the world the way it's supposed to be. And when we look at the advocate, we see that the advocate is our paraclete. He's our comforter, trying to make everything work to our own good. Look at what the Pope said. Pope Francis said something that resonates with me. He said that uh, who he is called to the ministry is not the master of his or her own vocation. Rather, the administrator of a gift that God has entrusted to him or her. So tonight, God is restoring the situation in your life. God is healing your brokenness. And God is preparing restoration for you. There will be healing for you. There will be, there will be healing for you and your family, no matter what you are going through. Remember that God knows that you are existing. If God can take care of all the insects, if God can take care of all the animals and birds of the air and also created the ego to maneuver the turbulence, then talk more of human beings. There is divine arrangement in your life, my dear brothers and sisters. There is divine arrangement for favor in your condition. There is divine arrangement for you and your family. Believe it tonight. There is divine arrangement for your siblings. There is divine arrangement for you and your in-laws and friends. Claim them in Jesus' name. Do not be pessimistic. Be optimistic. Pray that your life will be arranged by God. When God arranges your life, you are like somebody that has something to fall back on when you retire or when you are sick. Abraham and Sarah, for instance, had divine arrangement. That's why they did not panic or go begging for fruit of the womb when the angel passed and came to their house. They offered them food and they ate and drank. The angels made a divine utterance. By this time next year, you and your wife shall conceive. You will have a son. And Sarah laughed. Look at that. That laughter brought her several gifts. Because Sarah did not see it coming, she laughed because she was aging. She was laughing because she was aging. Remember when Sarah was tired of waiting for divine arrangement, she made a great mistake by pushing Abraham to marry Hagar, the maid servant. But when the time for the Lord to accomplish what he had already planned. When the time of the Lord came, many things happened. In your own time, God will fulfill your own divine arrangement in Jesus' name. You will not make the mistake of your life. Even if there is mistake in your life, God is pardoning you in Jesus' name. God is pardoning you in Jesus' name. God is restoring back what was, what was lost in your own, own, own life in Jesus' name. Claim your possession and blessing tonight because God is arranging your marriage. God is arranging your family tonight. God is arranging how things are going on in your business. Let me tell you, tonight is your own night. God is arranging what is going on in your life. Some people are scattered, just like the children's room. They all scatter everything, their sneakers everywhere because they don't understand. 
and mommy and daddy will be shouting and shouting and shouting. Arrange your room, clean up and so on. And they will be behaving like children. Sometimes we behave like children in the eyes of the Lord. And God is helping us tonight to organize our life again in Jesus' name. You are scattered. You don't drink, but you are scattered. You are, you, you are, God is organizing you once again. You have to be in retrospect. You have to recall back. You have to remember the genuine time you have been with the Lord. Don't lose hope. I'm talking to you tonight. Yes, you. You, yes, you. I'm talking to you tonight. Don't lose hope. There is hope for you. God is arranging your life. God is ministering to you for success. Yes, that's the exam. You will pass in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight. Yes, don't count how many times you have failed, you have failed the exam. Oh, what matters is that you rise up. You rise. You rise again. Don't be counting how many times. Jesus fall three times. Imagine God man falling down. How can God fall? That human beings can fall many times. God is with you in your condition. Even in your exam success and failures, God is patting you on the back. Don't lose hope. We are in the world full of toughy toughy. You will survive every situation. Don't lose hope. God is arranging your life tonight. God is talking to your children tonight. Yes, your children, I'm talking to you. God is talking to them today. Keep on, uh, keep on addressing the situation. Sometimes you think they don't understand. Yes, they don't understand because they are children. But keep on talking. Sometimes change style. Sometimes use another skill upon them. You cannot just look at them. And keep praying for them. Don't curse them. Look at them. Change time for them. Ha. They will say, ha. Mommy did not talk to them. Daddy did not talk. Oh, now, wow, I don't know what I did. Though. Change styles. Change skills. The Holy Spirit will direct you what to do in every situation. When you have been talking and talking and talking, change styles. I'm talking to you. Change your skills. God will bring back your children to you again in Jesus' name. Keep on praying for them. It's not easy. I know what you're going through. You'll be saying, how many years? For how long? A thousand years is like a sight before the Lord. So far, you're still alive. Keep, keep, keep hoping. Keep believing in God. Look at the tree around your house. They are still standing there. The trees around the house are still standing there in faith because that's where they are planted. When the rain is falling, it fall upon them. If the sunshine is, it fall upon them. Look at things around you. That will help us to understand how we shall be following God. See the hand of God around you. From creatures to your creation. Look around and believe again. In your own time, God will fulfill your own divine arrangement. This message is for many people that are going through a lot. You are not alone. Make sure that you, you, reach, you send this message to many people that are struggling. Because many people are scattered in their life. Many families are scattered. And they lose hope in God. If there is any mistake in your life, God will correct it in Jesus' name. God will bless you again. Don't lose hope. There is nothing that God cannot do for you. There are certain things we can't change when God's hand is not with us. But when God stands this with us, we can change a lot. When God stands this with us, all you need to say is, I'm in God's hands. I shall not fear. Because divine blessing is with you. you. Remember, Abraham and Sarah at last received their own divine blessings. In their old age, there was a couple I met at St. Gregory Parish, Iowa, Debe, close to Oga Junction. The lady was almost a, a 10 years older than the man. They came to me for marriage course. The young man was very eager to wed, to wed this lady. And I was looking at the young man's face. He was still very young, younger than the, the woman she wanted to marry. I was I, I was disturbed, and I had to I had to ask questions because uh, uh, my signature would be in the in the certificate. 
I called the, the the woman and the young man. I called them out. I asked them a question. How did you how did you meet each other? And they told me their story. They worked together in the same factory. They worked together in the same factory. And this young man, the parents had died. He was the only son raised by somebody. And this young man was making an effort to survive in life. And lo and behold, he saw this woman. He had been admiring this woman without this woman knowing that he was admiring him in the, in the, in the, in the factory. This woman was just being about her normal business, relating well with many people. But this, this, this young man was looking around for a wife. And that's how it happened. I asked this young man, when I brought him out, I, I, I was a little bit disturbed. I wanted, to, I wanted to clear my conscience that I have done my job as a priest to catechize them. I also advised them on the implication of marriage before, of uh, marriage for better for worse, so that the man would not say he did not understand the whole implication. The man was even the person that spoke to me. He smiled. He said, Father, I know you were concerned about the age of my wife. <laughs> Look at that. I said, yes. Then he told me that he was the only son. And his parents died when he was very young, many years ago. He did not have any other siblings. But since he met with this woman, that he felt that he had, he had, he had gotten a wife. I was very curious. Then the man told me, Father, now could you believe that she was still a virgin at her age? That they went to see a, a doctor for health evaluation and also to know about the condition of the womb. That was my concern, whether this woman would conceive and serve, and then whether this, this man would just disappoint this, young, this lady. That was my concern as a priest, because I had to make sure that uh, he wasn't under a spell and so on, because there are a lot of things happening in this world. So I had to make sure that this young man was not under a spell and so on. But this man was, they even went to the monastery to pray. I'm coming over. So they went to the hospital, and the doctor disclosed to him the news that this woman was still a virgin because they were trying to look to check the, the womb of the old lady to know whether she would conceive and so on. That's how the doctor was able to tell the young man that this woman was still a virgin. So he went further to say that uh, he was not uh, marrying her because she was a virgin, but because of her character and her spirituality. They went also for retreat at the monastery. Hmm. My people, when you see this type of bonding and mutual understanding before marriage, you will see that it is really a divine arrangement. After the wedding, you won't believe this. After the wedding, God blessed them with twins, two boys at a stretch. And let her give them a girl. This is a sacred story that shows us that God designs our sacred life for a purpose and for people to learn. When we are overconscious about our life, God will laugh at us. Sometimes we think that because we are careful and very smart, that's why we are still existing and that's why we are succeeding. No. The God, the God we serve, His hand is in our life. Look at that. In Isaiah chapter 62, from verse 2, following, says, you will be called by a, a new name. And in verse 3, it says, you will be a crown of splendor in the lost hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. In verse 4, it says, no longer will they call you deserted, 
or name your land desolate. I was looking at Isaiah 62 from verse 1 to 5, and I was thinking about the life, the life of this young man and the life of this lady. This young man was still young, and this this young lady, this lady felt that she was aging and son, that she could not even get her husband. But look at what God did in their life. That was a, a great design and a great arrangement by God to bring them together. The life of these two people I wedded really confirmed the message of Isaiah. People look at time and age. But God plans and designs moments of surprise in our life. In the life of this woman, you can imagine what was going on within her. She might have thought that nobody would have had a hand in marriage for her. Both of them work in the same company, an Indian company. And that's how they met each other. Look at that. The young man saw in her a sister, a mother, and a wife. The woman understood the delicate condition of this young, handsome man. The woman said that she asked the man, why did he want to marry her? The man was very bold to tell her that he saw how dedicated she was and how she related to other workers. She was surprised at his answer and an interest in her. They were telling me their story because I had to know. I had to make sure before I wed somebody. So they told me their story, their secret story. Look at that. In verse 4 of our book of Isaiah chapter 62, the Lord says, the Lord will take delight in you. You see, when you are upright, when you are doing the will of God, and when you love God, and you are following the precepts of God, you won't even know that God is arranging your future for you. God is designing your way for you. Our mother Mary is a great designer. Look at her dresses. She's a great designer. And you can imagine, the God that made us, he will be arranging for us what we are not even thinking about. There was a man that so much loved the wife. The wife was a good housewife. And the, during her birthday, the husband did not even tell the wife that uh, he was bringing a brand new car for her. This woman took care of their children while this woman, this man was uh, was doing business for the family. And then on his uh, on his way back from from trip, he bought a car for the wife and packed it in the parish house. And then told the wife that um, they, they they would like to go for adoration. Because today was her, that day was her birthday. And the wife was saying, oh, I don't want to call what they called each other. Because uh, some people have known the story. They called them, themselves the name they called each other. And then I said, but uh, today I had to be at home. I celebrate. I said, why church? What, would I have gone to a restaurant and eat? And so I said, I know we shall be going. But let's first of all go to the church and thank Jesus. The wife, the wife did not understand the... The the, the 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 husband, the wife did not even know that the husband had already called me in the parish to bless the the car and also to bless the wife, and he, he was telling me how good the wife was and still is. So the wife came, both of them went to the chapel of adoration, and they were praying together, adoring the Lord, and then the man stepped out and then uh, knocked at my door in the office and said, the wife, was there in the in the chapel, and then she, she eventually joined the wife in the chapel. And after praying, they came out, and they said, "Father, bless us." And I blessed them. And then uh, the man brought out um, 
the key from the from his own uh, 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 pocket and said, "Bless this uh, key for me." And I blessed the key, and then uh, he handed over the key to the wife. The, wa the wife was moping; she didn't know what was going on. And then uh, I kept my cool. I didn't want to laugh. I didn't want to spoil the man's plan that very day. So I told the wife, "Look at the key. The key belongs to you. That's your, the key to your to your car." The woman did not know that car was coming, and uh, eventually we went outside. And the woman, uh, she, the man pointed the car the car to the wife, and then the wife was all, all eyes. So it was like tears of joy and so on. She didn't expect it coming. She didn't know why the husband said they would go to the church and so on. You know, when God is in your family life, you have to begin with the Lord and end with the Lord. You have to begin your life with the Lord and end with the Lord. Always remember to go to the Lord, to thank Him for everything. Some people don't even remember to do the signs of the cross or to pray before they eat. When God is in your life, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Remember that God's hands are upon you, and God is with you always. We have to know this and we have to bear this in mind. So look at what happened in this, this uh, man's life and the woman's life. And be able to believe that success will be yours one day. And that was how this woman celebrated her birthday. Just believe that there is divine arrangement for every time of your life. Just believe, my dear people, that your own divine success is coming. God brings people together for a genuine purpose. A man was going to to look for a job, and on the way, it started raining. One of the CEO rushing to work did not even know when his car uh, jumped into a pothole on the road and splashed dirty water upon the young man that was uh, searching for a job. The man stopped to apologize. Not only that he, he stopped to apologize, he decided to carry this man in his own car. And as they were discussing, the man asked him where he was going so as to drop it. The young man told him that he was an applicant. He was an applicant. And this CEO was looking at this man. This man took him to his office and after looking at his resume and CV, he right there gave him a job. Look at that. You know, God works in many ways. People think that God can come down from heaven and talk to you when you are sleeping or when you are when you are awake, God can God's ways are not our ways. That's the point I want to make. God's ways are not our ways. God has designed many things for you without your knowing. I told you how I went to Jerusalem. I didn't even know it was coming. I looked at my, my I looked at my, my 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 email and I saw. The email, Father, can you are you available to lead the pilgrims? I never go. I have never been to Jerusalem. Sometimes you look, you see things coming. You, you won't even know why. In spite of my unworthiness, in spite of your unworthiness, God still takes care of you. God thinks of you. God thinks about you. It may be long, but all I know is that one day. You will see the hand of God in your life. And that will help you to recall certain situations in your life that will point to the situation where you, are, where, where you have arrived now. And see that God's hand are in your, in your life. Look at this man. He was looking for a job. And God 
arrange this situation to happen. Under the rain. He didn't see it coming. Without knowing that the person that splashed the, 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 the dirty water was the CEO of a company. And this man was looking for that type of job. And when he looked at his CV, he also was lucky too to have that type of man. That was a divine arrangement for me. That was a divine arrangement for the CEO. That was a divine arrangement for this man. God makes things happen. God makes things happen. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. God makes things happen. And that will bring us to the reflection of tonight. Book of Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 to 10. Book of Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 to 10. Remember, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Pause for a while and think about this. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. That was the call of Jeremiah. And in verse 6 of chapter 1, Jeremiah was saying, I do not know how to speak. I am a young man. I am too young. Just like the rest of men and women would say in our own generation. I am still young. I don't know anything. Who told you you don't know anything? You are creating the image and likeness of God. All you have to all you have to do is to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself that you can do something because God is in your life. Sometimes we even forget that our shadow is following us around. Sometimes we don't even look around and see that even when we are driving, the shadow of our car is also following the car. Because we are so focused on our problem, 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 that we lose sight or we lose sight of divine blessing and divine presence even with us. We lose sight of divine presence with us. I'm creating awareness tonight that we have to be able to be cautious that God is with you. God is with you. Take in deep breath and breathe out. And say, God is with me, even in my difficult situation. Sometimes people will say, but why is this thing happening to me? I may not answer it correctly. But all I know is that everybody has his or her own stations of the cross. The only person that can answer your, your condition is Jesus Christ. No matter what you are going through, it cannot surpass the cross of Jesus Christ. Our little cross will be big for us because we are human. But when we recline on the cross of Jesus Christ, as our great designer, the word that the word that was used to create the world will be able to understand that he has planned a lot for us. Of course, not without suffering. Jeremiah was saying in verse seven, in verse six, he was saying, "I don't know how to speak." Without knowing that God had already put something in his mouth to speak, and in verse seven, the Lord said. Don't say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send to you and say whatever I command you. When we realize that we are not in this world by ourselves and for ourselves, when we are alive, we are alive for the Lord. And when we die, we are, di we are dying for Jesus. That will help us to understand our condition. That will help us to understand what is going on in our life. Sometimes, our life is full of mystery. I don't even understand myself sometimes. I don't. How can I understand what is going on in the world? Look at what happened to the Brazilian players. 
Then you are going to Colombia. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the plane did not fall. And they crashed. They were, we are told only six people survived. You can imagine what was going on in the mind of the survivors and the trauma that they will be going through, losing their players and so on. And, 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 and also the siblings and the parents of these this young men and women. If, uh, I don't know how many of them. But look at why it happened. I don't know. It's only God that will answer this. That's the example I'm giving you. It's, God, it's only God that can answer certain situations. What you, can, what you don't know the, the answer, why are you cracking your brain? Just surrender everything to God that understands every uncertainty. What you cannot change, surrender it to God. The unseen God that sees all your uncertainty. If you're able to surrender it, you see that you will have rest of mind. And be able to sing, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Yes. Not, not I surrender, I surrender half. Not surrender half and half. You surrender all. You say, God, take care of my problem. God, take care of what is going on in my office. Yes, I made a mistake. But God, I am human. I am sincerely sorry. Help me to come out from this condition. Help me to come out from this critical condition. Help me to come out from this situation. I am confused. I don't know how to come out from this. I don't know how to be about this. Look at my family. I am the breadwinner of my family. Look at what I'm going through in my office. Look at what I'm going through in my business. Look at what is happening in my family. Oh, Father, I am confused. Let me tell you, when you stay in front of your altar, or, or reading your Bible, or even or sitting on your seat and contemplating about this, you won't even know when you doze off. You may be holding your Bible, and, you, and sleep comes. God will just set you to sleep. And when you wake up, God may give you answers to many things. Many people have tried this and it happened to them. Many have experienced what I'm telling you tonight. When you are in the Lord, there are many ways God talks to you. It is left for you to discover, to discern how God speaks to you. And when you see the hand of God in you, you're able to understand what God is trying to tell you. And how things will play out later. Don't be afraid of them. That was what God told her. Called Jeremiah in verse 8. Don't be afraid of them. For I'm with you. I will rescue you. Ask yourself. Why did you survive many tragedies? Tragedies in your life. Because God has designed that you will not die. Why are you still alive? Till today. In spite of what you are going through. You don't even know the answer. In spite of what you are going through, you are still surviving. You are alive because of divine arrangement. Go and look at book of Psalm 118, verse 17. You say, God has arranged everything for you. God has arranged many things for you. God has arranged time and seasons. Summer, winter, spring, autumn. This is what God has designed for you. God knows why you why you are still surviving. The same way in Gospel of Mark, chapter ten, we read, God made them male and female from beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. 
and the two are united into one. They are no longer two but one. So when we are going through certain situations, you look at the Bible. There are certain things that are already established by God. This is divine arrangement. We have to understand situations in the Bible and know that these are divine arrangements for us. And God is at work in us. And Jesus, when, when you suffer, if, there, if you are going through any cross, if you, are going, if you are suffering from any type of situation, all you have to do is to look into the Bible. Jesus said in Gospel of Luke chapter 9 from verse 22, the soul of man must suffer many things and be rejected by elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the, of the law. And he must be killed. And on the third day, he raised to life. He was not dead when he was saying this. He had not started suffering. But he foresaw all the things because he was God-man. But as human beings, we don't see like Jesus. But God has arranged certain things in our life to happen. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm begging you tonight. I'm encouraging you tonight. To, not to lose hope. You have a reason to believe that God is in your life in spite of the fact that you are going through what you are going through. I told you my story as a, a, little, as a young man when I was about to go into the seminary and when I, was, I entered the seminary. I was about to go to morning mass. I, I arranged my own uh, T-shirt. I placed it where I, I was to wear it in the morning. I didn't know from nowhere how Scorpion entered my T-shirt. And I wasn't happy with God because I didn't go for money mass that very day. Without knowing that God removed me from the kidnappers because I missed mass that very day because Scorpion sting me that very day. So I missed mass that very day. And the, the master was we looking for me because I never missed mass. You see? But I'm not saying that uh, the, the kidnappers that kidnapped a young boy and the way that it was okay. But I was seeing how God was preparing me for something in the future and was able to uh, remove me from the danger. Because they were saying that somebody was kidnapped on the way. And God preserved my life. I said, why did God allow me to leave you today? I don't know. But I see the hands of God in my life. That's why the souvenir of my priesthood, what I said is, God, may your hand be on the man you have chosen. And the hand of God has been with me all this while. I see every hand of God in my life, every day of my life. And I'm encouraging you today, even when you are going through turbulent weather, try to see the hand of God in your life, no matter what you are going through. Ask yourself, what is God telling me in this situation? What is God trying to tell me? In Gospel of Luke chapter 9 from verse 23, it says, If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself or herself, take up his cross daily and follow me. No cross, no crown. If, if, in spite of the fact that God is in your life and arranging many things for you, but look at what Jesus had told, to, told us today, that we must deny ourselves Take up our crosses daily. Sometimes we don't want the crosses. Just like people that are wedding, for better, not for worse. In, sick, in, in health, not in sickness. No cross, no crown. Every farmer will go through a lot so to make the crops grow. Out of our sweat we shall eat. But when we relax and reap the fruit of our labor, Many people will not know or understand how we are suffering. But it is only you and God that will know how you, what you went through before you reached to this level you are now. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm encouraging you and I'm advising you not to lose hope. Believe that God has a lot, a lot to, to offer you. You are in the hands of God because God is your great designer. There is divine arrangement for everybody. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you are going through, believe that God is in your life. 
believe that God is in your life. You carry a, 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 a child on your laps. You don't even know how this child grows. All of a sudden, there will be teeth in, in, the, child, in the child's mouth. You, you cut your nails every day or every week or every month. You don't even know how they grow. We shave our beards almost every day. And when I touch my beard, they're already there. I still, I, but I cut you yesterday. We don't understand ourselves that God has planned for us. He's a great designer. You, 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 you bob your hair. And within a few days, he's already there looking at you. How can you explain all these things? We are mystery to ourselves. But we are with a mysterious God that un understands every mystery. That's why we have to anchor our hope on Him. We have to believe again. Look at the Bible, Book of Tobit, chapter three. We'll be able to see the divine arrangement, marriage made from heaven between Tobit and Sarah. You knew the story of Sarah. Sarah that married up to seven people. And many people thought that he would no longer marry again. And God brought husband for, for, for her. And so tonight, I mean, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to lose hope. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. Take in deep breath. Let's go into prayer. Remind yourself that God has a purpose for you. Take in deep breath and relax your nerves in your room. God is talking to you and ministering to you today. The Lord is reigning in my life. Hallelujah. The Lord is reigning in my life. Hallelujah. The Lord is reigning in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord is reigning in your life. Hallelujah. He relates in my life as my Savior. He will reign in your life as your Savior. He has a great plan for you. My child, don't lose hope, for he's reigning in your life as your Savior. Heavenly Father, I, on what is seven, stand before your presence to bless your children tonight. I'm reassuring them from the scripture that you, my God, you still have design, designing plan for them. Look at First Kings chapter 17 from verse 7 to 16. The, the widow of Zarephath did not even know that God was planning for her. She was trying to eat and die with a son. And God sent Elijah to her. Oh, Father, I pray that you design and arrange for my children that are going through a lot. Some of them are still looking for a fruit of the womb. I pray that you bless them with the fruit of the womb. Some are looking for male children. Bless them with male children. Some are looking for female children. Bless them with female children, oh Lord. Some are still looking for life partners. Heavenly Father, I pray that you never leave them empty-handed. Bless them with life partners, O oh Lord. I pray for divine breakthrough for them. I pray for divine arrangement for them. You were able to arrange the, the, uh, the, the marriage between Tobit and Tobit, uh, between Tobit and uh, Tobit family and Sarah's family. Oh Lord, I pray that you also arrange it for this family in Jesus' name. I pray that age will not be a limitation for them. We have seen what you have been doing in, in, your, in people's life, and today we have seen that God's hand is in our life. I pray for your divine blessing. I pray for divine favor. I pray for divine breakthrough in your life. God is doing good things in your life. God is doing great things in your life. Believe again that God is in your life. God will never leave you alone because God is in your life. I pray for divine favor. I pray for divine arrangement for you and your family. Your son will survive. Your daughter will survive. Your son will survive. Your daughter will survive. Even if you have an only son, don't be afraid. Nothing will happen to him. I pray that God will continue to reassure us and bless us. You are, you, are, you are designed to succeed. Heavenly Father, I pray that you remove fear from our children. Many people are afraid of their future. 
many have been going through a lot, especially those people that want to pass the exams, and they are still struggling, oh, Father. I pray for your enlightenment, and that will with your wisdom, O oh, Lord, that they will be able to succeed. They will survive again. Many people have been going through a lot, especially many people that have been tormented and tortured by evil spirits. Oh, Father, will you allow your children to be like this again? I pray for a divine intervention in their life. They want to be normal again. They, want, they don't want to be hearing those voices. They don't want to be piloted by many people. They don't want to be piloted by witches and wizards. Many people are haunted in many ways. I, I pray for a divine inter, in, 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 intervention in their life, oh Lord. Tonight is the night of divine blessing. You have already showed us in the Bible many things that will show us that you have divine arrangement for people. They want to experience it, oh Lord. They want to experience it in their life. They want to experience it in their family. I pray for your divine signs and wonders in their family. That tonight will be another day for them to be reassured of God's expectation and hope. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going into to bless water and soul tonight. Heavenly Father, tonight we have gathered again to bless the sacramentals. You have given us the gift of water and salt. In Second King chapter two from verse eighteen to twenty, Elisha was able to bless salt and water. And so Father, I raise my hands of blessing because you said in Gospel of John twenty twenty three that we shall receive the Holy Spirit. Whatever we bless is blessed. And whatever we cast and bind is cast and bind. I pray and exercise this living water. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that you no longer be ordinary water. I exercise you, living salt. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I will no longer be ordinary salt. That I be a the sacramental grace for the efficacy of blessing and abundant blessing upon all that will be using it, either to cook or to drink the water. That you no longer be ordinary water. No longer be ordinary salt. That they be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to repel and rebuke any type of principles and powers in that house, in any place, even in their job and in the house. I pray for divine intervention in their family. As, they, as you bless this water, O oh Lord, may it be filled with your divine blessing. In the name of God the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. As you bless this salt, O oh Lord, may it be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open your hands, take a deep breath, and breathe out. Heavenly Father, the hour has come for you to bless the destiny of my children again. Every month I bless their destiny because we are destined to succeed. I pray that nobody will take away the destiny of my children. Nobody will take away the star of my children. God of my life, bless their destiny. God of my life, bless their destiny. They are destined to succeed. They are destined to survive. Oh, God of my life, bless their destiny. Heavenly Father, I raise my hands of Elijah upon my children, O oh Lord, to bless their destiny. Bless their star, O oh Lord. The sky is their limit. I pray for a divine intervention in their life. You said in the Bible that out of our sweat we shall eat. Bless the work of their hand, O oh Lord. You said in the time we take from verse 1 to 10 that their sweat shall never be in vain. Many people don't know what is happening in their money. Many people don't know why, why they are still suffering. In spite of the fact that they do two jobs. And still, they, they, they don't know where their money is going. And so, Father, I pray that you bless their destiny. I rebuke and reject any type of response and power that I've been touching and holding against my, my children's wealth. Enough is enough. I pray for restoration of, of, and blessing. I pray for divine blessing upon you. That the God we serve will bless your destiny. In the name of God, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then use your use your little finger uh, and just put little salt in the water. If you are pregnant, just count the the, the salt you are putting in the water. 
May the mixture of salt and water be made in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray that as you have joined this water and salt in spirit, I pray that you, my Lord, will reign within that water and salt, that commingling that will bring that efficacy of divine power, the power to exercise, the power to rebuke and reject any type of respect and powers hovering around their house or in their office. I pray for a divine intervention in their family. When they sprinkle it upon themselves, upon their children, upon their parents and in-laws and friends, may they experience divine blessing, divine grace, divine healing for the sick, divine strength for those that are healthy, and, and divine hate of divine protection upon them one by one. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing the oil now. Heavenly Father, he said in Jeremiah chapter 8 from verse 22, Is there no balm in Gilead that my children's wounds are no longer healed? You have given us the mountain of olive and you have given us the olive oil. I pray for a divine blessing upon this olive. It will, it will no longer be ordinary olive. Rather, let it be an anointing oil for your children. The, 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 the sick need, need your blessing. The healthy ones need your protection. I crave your divine indulgence to render your divine grace upon this oil that will no longer be ordinary oil. Let it be filled with the efficacy of divine power that will repel any type of precise and powers hovering around us because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I, will, I rebuke any type of evil forces that have been torturing and tormenting my children both in dream and daylight. So that when they, they rub it upon their body, O oh Lord, you will be able to repel any type of evil forces hovering around them, or trying to di disrupt their sleep, O oh Lord. May they have a healthy and sound sleep. I pray that you, my God, will guide and protect them. Put the hedge of divine protection and blessing upon your children as they rub the oil upon their body. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I bless the candles that they will use in this new month. This is the new month, O oh Lord. I pray for a divine intervention in their life. Anoint and embrace the yoke. I pray that your light will illumine our own light. I pray for your divine blessing to be upon this light, O Lord. Because darkness and light does not coexist. When they lit this candle on their altar, O Lord, as the, the candle is melting like wax, melt their problem, O Lord. Melt the powers of the enemies. Weaken the powers of the enemies. Weaken the powers of the enemies in Jesus' name. We can the powers of the enemies in Jesus' name. We can the powers of the witches and wizards in Jesus' name. We can the powers of the witches and wizards in, in Jesus' name. Any type of incantation or liberation, I come against all principles and powers in Jesus' name. Because I know that you, my God, your light is like a thunder in the land of the evil forces. The cult of Jesus is not against any type of occultic power. I pray for liberation, O oh Lord, for your children. I pray for their liberation. I pray for their liberation from their captivity. They will be set free for whoever is set free is free indeed. As you set Paul and Silas free in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, from verse 16 following, they were set free from their, their torturers. In the same way, God, I pray that you break the chain and break the yoke in my children's life. For they have suffered enough. Enough is enough. I pray for a divine grace and blessing upon them. As the light is shining in their family, let there be peace. Let there be love. Let there be understanding. Let there be mutual understanding, O oh Lord, between husband and wife, between in-laws and friends, between siblings, O oh Lord. As we answer, as we, as we recall in the Bible that you said in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7, that you ask, we shall receive, and seek, and we shall find, and knock, and the door will open. I pray that you open the door of divine blessing upon them for your children to shine once again and believe that you, my God, you are in their life. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.